Okay, I bet I can hear you now. Yeah, no, it's important to, I'm beginning to understand, it. it's important to get into a routine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's very oh. easy to, to think that, um, oh, you know, there's, uh, there's more important things for me to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Hello there, Cheryl. Hello. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? Doing just fine. Cold. Excellent. You're I cold. Have, <laughs> yes, right. Many warm things on. <laughs> You're sitting there, it looks like in a t-shirt. So uh well it has warmed up in the last couple hours where I am. Okay. Yeah. It well, must I'm, be below. It must be below 20 degrees where you are then, Richard. <laughs> uh, that's right. 20 degrees C, you're right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. When I we were... dream about it being 20 degrees C. Uh -huh. so it's about, about 7 or 8 degrees C where I am. Yes, yes, I know. It's much worse than Mexico, but Mexico... It seems like uh, the last couple of days have been cold, wintry days, and we're not supposed to have those. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the room I'm in is, uh, during the day, is the coldest room in the house. Oh. Yeah. I and, remember being in um, Guadalajara once, and it went down to six degrees. And I was having my car serviced and things like that. And in the dealership, those they were going crazy, you know, six degrees. That's like kind of minus 30 for those guys. <laughs> well, it's been uh, for the last several weeks in the morning, it's been like uh, six or eight in the morning. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were saying 20 degrees, I know what that is. Since I'm American, I tend to think in Fahrenheit instead of centigrade. And when I was in India, after uh, a while, we got uh, one of those uh, two-piece air conditioners in the bedroom, and we would set it at 22 degrees to sleep. And that's the only reference I actually have. Yeah. No, well, um, of course, the first half of my life, I was living with the, um, um, Fahrenheit and miles and, and uh, pounds. But uh, it took at least 20 years, but... Um, I'm into kilograms and kilometers and uh, whatever. And uh, but I like kilometers; they uh, they go a lot quicker than miles. That's <laughs> right. I uh, I agree. <laughs> and you know, so I've been uh, out of the U.S. now for almost fifteen years, and so I I've certainly think more naturally in kilometers, I still am, uh, have the wrong temperature system though. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think it might be uh, that uh, Dee Dee is, uh, I heard that she was going uh, away to uh, the beach and that's probably why she's not here, so. Let us just proceed. You were already talking about your experience, Clive, and you were saying that you're have for you the afternoon is looks like it's a time to meditate, and you're doing that with more regularity. Still not consistent, but more regularity. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I think that's real positive. 
Uh, how about you, Cheryl? Um, I don't think I've missed a day this week. I, I tried making a rule that I couldn't have lunch unless I, unless I meditated. <laughs> if I can tie, if I can tie it to food, it will work much better. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I have to be a little bit careful about when, because if it's during my, I'm planning my day mode, then I find it very difficult to settle down and, um, and then it just gets sort of uh, <laughs> not ir not irritating, but it just seems like a lot of work to try right. and let everything go and just right. be there. That's yeah. why uh, the that's one of the things that's good for some people. That's what I found about uh, meditating in the morning. Particularly, I was doing that when I was living in uh, Silicon Valley in a consultant. I had my days were very much filled with activity and I would meditate. I felt like before all that other stuff got booted up. Right, right. Yes. And, yeah. You know, now, uh, in terms of a kind of former regular time, I do like you do, Clive. Clive uh, Carol and I have an afternoon time where uh, we've meditated together for about the last 15 years. Yeah. And, you know, it's great and it's great there to have a partner because there are ways in which you reinforce each other. So once it gets to be a habit, if it's both your habits, then yeah, then you're That's really right. stuck with it. Well, uh, Bev always accompany, well, she's more inclined to accompany me on my morning walk, uh, you know, and th that is kind of, meditative except we um, it's not real it's not always tranquil you know uh -huh. but, uh, it's a morning walk and meditation in the afternoon which will recharge me for the rest of the day that's my right. planning yeah. mm -hmm. and for me i i find uh walking with someone is not nearly as meditative because somehow my attention is still more on uh, this other person than kind of within myself. And so the, for me, the best walking meditation is when I'm by myself. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, then kind of get started at our uh, hard work of doing nothing. And so we'll uh, have a 10 minute meditation and just words of uh, remind, reminding uh, what we're doing is paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, and fully receiving whatever is experienced and then letting it go. And uh, then we will uh, go and I will just let you guys uh, quietly meditate and I'll meditate along with you. So here we go. Let me so you can meditate looking in the flame.
All right. Now, what I want to talk about today is just a little bit about meditation in the brain. You know, there are a lot of reasons to meditate. The first reason for many people to meditate, it brings a sense of calm and balance into their everyday life. And that's a real worthwhile thing. But, you know, the long-term benefits of meditation to the brain are significant. And in simple terms, meditation strengthens the good parts of the brain and helps calm the parts of the brain that stress you out. Uh, you, as you meditate, you're actually growing your brain. You're adding white cells and gray cells. The white cells are your brain's processing unit or the, the white cells are your brain's network. They connect things together and the gray cells are your processing cells. And people who meditate regularly gain both kind of brain cells. So you're growing your brain as you're meditating. And these changes are actually measurable after just eight weeks of regular meditation. So the two of you are halfway there. And uh, the parts of your brain that uh, get bigger are parts involved with things like learning, memory, planning, problem solving, relationships, and creativity. You know, so those, those are things I personally like. Mm -hmm. And uh, the parts of your brain that is involved with anxiety and stress actually gets smaller. This is the amygdala, the main part of the lizard brain. And uh, I heard one description of a neuroscientist talking about the amygdala, and he was saying, you can see it begin to atrophy. And I think that's a part of my, me I would be happy to have atrophy. And the thing is that this brain growth continues as long as you continue regular meditation. And to me, that is real significant. There are some studies I read about people that we would consider to be fanatics and who uh, these were, I believe, uh, Vedic Hindus that spent a lot of time doing Sanskrit chanting every day. And the parts of their brain that were involved were a half inch bigger. You know, so it's, <laughs> it's a lot of growth anyway. And so uh, it regular meditation keeps the growth in your brain going. This growth stops if you stop meditating. So to me, uh, that is one of the things that as uh, I age, taking care of my brain has become more important to me. And, you know, your brain loses about 5% of its mass per decade once you're over 60. And uh, it turns out for meditators, that's not the same. I think there is still some brain loss, but it's much less, much slower. So uh, again, what you're doing when you're meditating is taking care of yourself at a very deep level. And okay. So uh, today I'm going to, we're going to do uh, a different kind of meditation. Uh, 
we're going to do a Buddhist loving kindness meditation. This is compassion meditation. And the Buddhists call it metta, M-E-T-T-A. And this is uh, a form that has been practiced for, again, at least 2,000 years by many, many people and uh, is uh, one of the fundamental parts of Buddhist meditation. Uh, those Buddhists are big on this compassion stuff, I guess. And uh, the this will consist of uh, your listening, you uh, think about yourself, you think about other people as it goes on, and there is a phrase they want you to say as you're thinking about them. And the phrase actually, different people who are giving the meditation give different phrases. Uh, the phrases really kind of helps focus your intent. And I suspect which phrase it is does not matter so much as the intent. So we'll try something different today and we'll do uh, a 10 minute meta meditation. This is loving kindness meditation. As we start this meditation, you are welcome to sit or lie down. You can have your eyes open or closed, whatever is most comfortable for you. We will have four phrases that we will work with, silently repeating each phrase with enough space and silence so that it's pleasing for you. The phrases that we will use are, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. We will use these phrases or any other variation that resonates with you. We will begin with the sound of the bell. We will begin by offering loving kindness to ourselves. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. With each phrase, Gather all attention and focus behind it. Feelings and thoughts will come and go and just release them as they come up. Here, the anchor is not your breath, but the repetition of the phrases. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now choose someone in your life that inspires you, strengthens you in some way. It could be a person close to you, or maybe someone you've never met, or even an animal that brings you joy. Someone when you think of them, you're grateful for. 
and direct the phrases of loving kindness to them. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Focus now on someone who might be having a difficult time right now, someone who may be hurting. And offer the phrases of loving kindness to them. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. If you find your attention wandering, don't be discouraged. Just gently turn your attention back to the phrases. Using the phrases as your anchor to this meditation. And now call to mind someone you may not know much about. Perhaps someone in your neighborhood or someone whose name you might not even know, and direct the phrases of loving kindness to them. Know that they also seek happiness just as you do. They are also vulnerable to pain or loss just as we are. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And now choose someone in your life you may have difficulty with, someone who might be causing you stress. Direct the phrases of loving kindness to them. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And if you find that it's just too difficult to direct the phrases toward them, just go back to redirecting it to yourself. In that moment, you are the one who is suffering, who needs compassion. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease.
Now direct the phrases of loving kindness toward all beings, toward all people, animals, every form of life, gathering all attention behind the phrases. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Okay, now, uh, I'm not sure if that ended or not. Uh, the, uh, yes, it ended. There it is. There's the bell. I knew it must be someplace. I had muted you uh, just because uh, we hadn't talked about this before. And I was going to say, had I talked about it, I do this quietly to myself. I muted you just in case you felt like saying this out loud. Either of those is fine. So when you want to talk again, you will have to unmute yourself. Uh, now, loving kindness, one of the things about loving kindness is it works on different parts of the brain than does mindfulness. 
mindfulness works basically on what some people might call the command and control system. And loving kindness works on the parts of your brain that are involved with relationships with others. And uh, considering how important these relations with others are to all of us, then uh, it might be something that is worthwhile uh, adding to your own program. And the thing I liked about this particular loving kindness meditation is the things she gave us to say, to say are easy to remember. So they're just four things. And uh, I think I can remember them. I think they're, may you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Hey, okay. And so, uh, uh, again, it's a very good thing to add to your routine. Uh, again, it helps another part of the brain grow. And the part of the brain that it helps grow is the stuff that helps us connect with other people. Oh, yeah, I, I especially like that one. I find that um, repeating those four phrases over and over again is very easy. And my mind doesn't wander, you know, I can, that, that works for me. Mm -hmm. Now, I've also, it's been interesting for me when I'm doing it, there's a part of it uh, where you're wishing loving kindness to someone you have had difficulty with. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that's been interesting for me. Uh, and it doesn't always flow as well as the uh, other parts of it. Uh, that meditation work. And I appreciate that she says, you know, if you have trouble with this, then direct it back at yourself because you're the one who needs the compassion. Yeah. And so anyway, I think it's a good practice. Yeah. Okay, now we will have the final uh, session, 15 minutes, just uh, basic mindfulness and watching the breath, I repeat as I do each time Buddha's actual instructions. Breathing in, I breathe in. Breathing out, I breathe out. That sounds pretty simple. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I calm my body. I find that a particularly good thing for me to do. Okay, so here we go.
All right. And now we'll close for the chant. Oh, Shanti, 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 Om, peace, peace, peace. All right. Now, any questions, comments? Um, I was curious about the loving kindness meditation, about adding that into my practice. Would you suggest doing like an extra meditation a day or alternating or what would your suggestion be? Uh, my suggestion is for you to try to figure out what uh, works the best for you. Uh, okay. Having, you know, uh, I've tried different uh, techniques. I've tried doing it instead of the regular meditation. Uh, I've also tried doing it as a part of my regular meditation. For me, that kind of works uh, well. But it, the thing is, uh, you know, we all have our own minds with our own proclivities and do it in a way that works is okay. my, my suggestion now there's one other thing that i really want to suggest and you know after the beginning of the year many people have revel uh resolutions and they're gonna just make themselves better and uh to take advantage of that spirit netflix has a new series that they just started and it's the headspace guide to meditation and there are eight 20 minute segments there are 10 minutes of instruction 10 minutes of meditation they're very well produced with uh good visuals and the guy who's leading them is a guy who got really interested in his 20s ended up giving up the stuff that he was doing going to india uh and after 10 years of uh, practice at Buddhist monastery, then he was uh, granted his official being a Buddhist monk, which you have to do 10 years of meditation to qualify for. And uh, he says, you know, it doesn't have to be as hard as all this stuff I did. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Anyway, it's uh, well produced. Uh, I haven't, I've just listened to the first one. Uh, my wife and I listened to it in, in one of our afternoon meditations and uh, it's good stuff. And he will lead through and give uh, different episodes, different exercises in each of the episodes. And again, it's Headspace Guide to Meditation on, U on Netflix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, see you next week. Good meditations. Okay. Thank you, Richard.